So hello again, YouTube, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm going to be talking today about how gangs and the occult world is very much related. I'm going to be talking about witchcraft and how gangs contribute to witchcraft and how they are actually connected. Bear with me. My voice is in and out. Stay tuned. So after seeing some testimonies online, talking to a baby brother in Christ, it really gave me the courage to come forth and give tidbits of my testimony in a new form, okay? And, uh, you know, for me, my testimony is a part of me that's something I tried to hide for a very long time because I'm ashamed of my past and I've done everything to try to bury it and try to run from it. But now's the time where the Lord needs to use it for his good. And if I can be the vessel for that, then so be it. So we're going to talk about that time when I almost joined a gang and the realization that the Lord gave me pretty recently regarding patterns that I've seen in the world and in different communities and in different groups of people. So to get started, um, started with this, a small back brief. Basically, me and my sister were raised with a single mom. She was not involved at all. Grew up in South Florida. Um, that is drug lord land down South Florida. Um, very close to Miami, actually. And if you want to be anybody, a lot of people over there become drug lords, strippers, or gang, mem gang members. Sorry, voice still in and out. Um... Of course, amongst other things, but in that neighborhood, in those neighborhoods, those are very prominent, very fast, very easy and effective ways to get out of your situation quickly. So if you happen to have a pretty face, or if you happen to have um, certain assets that can give you a way into... Uh, these groups or into this these worlds if you will then that's a blessing and it you know according to man and and that's what we grew up knowing so excuse me I was not very girly I was actually quite the opposite I like to say I mostly have very masculine uh, thoughts and ways about me. So I was never really a girly girl who dealt with makeup despite whatever you see. <laughs> never dealt with makeup, never dealt with like being cute. Um, so a lot of my friends were actually gang members and drug dealers. So, I saw these open windows, and it began to open doorways in my life that I was really pondering, especially with an upbringing where you don't know if you're going to have anything to eat that night, if you're going to get evicted, which happened often. And when my mom got put in jail many of times, and I was underage, and it was me and my sister, we weren't able to go to school. So it, it, it became very difficult. And especially, like, there were times where I was put in different school districts because I was known for fighting. Um, I was not the provoker. <laughs> I was the finisher. But 
I didn't take anyone's garbage and I didn't like to be disrespected. So I found myself getting in a lot of trouble. So we had to move my school district, lie, say that I lived at my aunt's house in a better neighborhood in order for me to go to a better school. Um, and when this happened, it just need, made me need more. I needed uh, different things to fit in with this new ideology of pe like this new group of people that have nothing in common with me whatsoever. Like they don't know what it's like growing up in the hood. They were rich. They they had money. So it made me feel even more uh, like I had to do something to opt out of my situation. Not to mention, obviously, there was no school buses or transportation for me. So trying to take a a ride, a bus ride, with connecting buses costed money that I didn't have. So that led me to almost being very much involved in or joining a gang and or drug dealing. So stay tuned um, to listen to what the occult has to do regarding these things. And I do want to talk about this is the fact that I'm just scratching the surface of the occult world and um, I'm getting deeper into my testimony that's one of the purposes this message may not be for all people but the purpose is to expose demons and to expose the the reasoning and the world that I knew before coming to Christ um, and this deals with the study of demonology and the occult so first I want to talk about purpose, okay? I'm going to talk about a couple of similarities that they have. And like I said, this is loosely based off of a wide range of characteristics of the occult world, okay? Just so that we're not going too deep into it, but we're still scratching the surface to get an idea of what we're dealing with to expose demons. And, um... I like to talk about these things because we don't know how certain things connect in this world. And really, the plan stays very much uniform, okay? Um, so yeah, how I opted out is I ended up joining the military, which was an option I never even knew I could have done. So I made my way out of my bad situation, by the grace of God, into the military. And that's a whole other story. But, to stay focused on this, right? Now, the similarities between uh, covens or witchcraft or warlocks and occultists in general is um, they lure you in, okay? It's not something that people that everybody wants to just be part of. It's like a last resort. It's one of those, I have no choice um, type things, for my sake anyway. Other people, it's, it's a family, kind of like going into the family business. And other people, it's because of a sense of loneliness. And I'm gonna explain this, right? So, the similarities that the occult world can offer you and similarities that gangs can offer you is that they will lure you in with promises of a new family, quote unquote, or friends, ride or die. Something that you can only relate to if you had no family. Um, if you had no one that loved you, if you had nobody there for you, then knowing that you have this group of people that you are very much part of makes a big difference. 
There's also promises for materialistic things, money, um, ways to get ahead in the food chain. Um, there's certain aspects without going too deep into detail. Pretty much, they'll promise you whatever you want, okay? Depending on what gang, depending on what, uh, how high you can be ranked or how high the leader is that you know, okay? And the same in the occult world. Usually in a gang or in an occult or in the occult world, you can't really make it in and you really can't make it up in the high ranks unless you know somebody who literally shows you off and says, hey, this is your guy. You definitely want him. You need somebody to put a word in for you. And uh, just, you know, to add on to the materialistic values, I mean, a lot of people want to look cool. A lot of people want girls. A lot of people want everything that comes with money. Okay? So, and, I, and I'm talking higher up in the food chain with gangs. I'm not talking about the average every day. But we can get into that as a broad basis. Remember, Miami is the hot spot of the higher up organizations in the food chain, okay? Dealing with Cuba, dealing with other countries, it is a hot spot of especially cocaine, okay? And, um, you know, to go a little bit into a testimony regarding that, I never myself had ever done drugs, but um, I've known friends and family members who have gotten very heavily addicted into these things and there is deliverance for you okay there is deliverance Miami's a hot spot for all these things they need prayer we need to pray for them all right so both have initiations okay so in the occult world, if you ever hear an ex-witch or ex-Satanist or ex-whatever in the occult world, Illuminati, anything, they talk about an initiation, okay? Now I'm going to expand on this because initiation can be physical or it can be spiritual. I'm going to talk about physical first and then I'm going to talk about some occultic things that I've dealt with in the past, okay? That's another testimony for another day. So initiation could be rape, stealing, killing, um, or just a task, okay? Sometimes things that hurt you, like getting beat up, getting raped, or other things that I'm not gonna go too deep into. But same thing in the occult world. That's the initiation. Okay? Both have blood sacrifices. Okay? Now this one's deep. Now in the occult world, we all know about these sacrifices. Um, if you've studied up or looked into it at all. You know, there's many conspiracies going on with Illuminati and what they do. And I don't doubt it at all. In order for people to be in these ranks, they must perform these things to get there. I know this at a low level of where I've come from in my life. Seeing people have to do things like that in order to become head honcho, in order to rank up, in order to get up there. So if that happens on a small people level, how much more do you think it is when you're a celebrity, when you're a star, when the entire world can see you? Keep in mind, I've said I've traveled around the world. So people in Korea to this day, they still have Bruce Jenner on their Wheaties box, boxes of cereal. And they still wear Michael Jackson in the clubs. 
Okay? I've spoke about that on a previous video. Selena also, she's not te technically American, but she, it, American music and movies go to the farthest ends of the world. Where they're taken a lot more seriously and it's not so much a fad in other countries. So how much more in, in blood sacrifices do you really think has to happen in order for you to be on top of the world like that? To have even billions of dollars, a.k.a. Uh, what's his name? Bill Gates. Okay? How much do you think he's done in order to get to be a billionaire? We got to think about these things. Okay? It doesn't come by chance. Please. Blood sacrifices open doorways for Satan. And that's what's going on in these neighborhoods. Okay? That's what's going on in these neighborhoods. Got a testimony for that. I've seen things in neighborhoods. I've seen people casting spells. But you know how they can do that? You know how they have... Um, how they're able to root that seed, how they're able to plant that seed and water it, is because of the doorway that's open through the sacrificing of violence. Violence in these neighborhoods. All this bloodshed. Even the Lord said that, you know, when uh, Cain killed Abel, he said his, his blood cries from the ground. Think about all the babies that are being sacrificed on a daily basis. Okay? There's testimonies of witches talking about sacrificing their first animal. Okay? Which voodoo is a big thing also in uh, Miami. You'll see. Uh, and my son decided to join us. <laughs> yeah, but you'll see um, bags that cops don't like to touch. On train tracks and things like that and 10 to 1 it's some type of animal sacrifice uh, I know this for a fact because I actually had a teacher who was a cop and every time they found a bag or a suitcase or things of that nature they're not allowed to touch it because there could be something dangerous so um the last thing that I wanted to add, just before I get off, is that, well, two more things. So as for this sacrifice also, one of those blood sacrifices and walking living sacrifices is yourself. So one thing I always like to say is that you are an ambassador and you get to choose what team you're on, you know what I mean? So, if you're an ambassador of Christ, then you will be in the image of Christ. If you're an ambassador of Satan and his many forms, you know, there's only a very, very, very narrow path to Jesus and, and to heaven. And a very broad highway um, to hell and to Satan. So, you are that other blood sacrifice, okay? Mommy, I, so, I sure. yeah, that goes hand in hand with, um, he, he's, he's less than, um, he's two, so he doesn't understand what I'm saying, but both have sworn secrecy worth your life, okay? So this is a covenant. There's a sworn secrecy when it comes to the occult world. There's a sworn secrecy when it comes to gang world, okay? And that's part of, like, the He-Man Woman Haters Club. I'm just using that term. Um, it's like one of those Mean Girls type things. You can't sit with us. It's, it's a pact. I'm sure everyone can relate to being a kid and mimicking these covenants or these pacts. Um, it's kind of a big deal. It's, it's actually a binding authority in the spiritual realm. Um, so these, these contracts that we sign in the physical realm are very much attached to us in the spiritual realm. Okay? 
especially we know that life and death is in the power of our tongue. So when we make a pact with somebody, when we swear to that, the only thing that can break that is the blood of Jesus. Okay, that's it. That's it. So thank you all brothers and sisters for joining me in that testimony and connection to something that the Lord has shown me pretty recently. But I guess the biggest portion of this whole thing, biggest message above all things, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? How? He died for our sins. How? And he came to set us free. He came to set us free. Yay. From all the sins of the world. There's nothing that can keep us from the love of Jesus. Mommy. Nothing can keep us from Mommy. the everlasting Mommy. love. Mm. That is Jesus Christ. Mm. So. I know. <laughs> you know. Mommy. So just accept Jesus Christ. Mommy. As your savior, this comes from the heart. This is something that only the Lord knows if you're telling the truth or not. Okay? It doesn't matter what you confess, profess. If it's not in your heart, then it doesn't matter. Okay? So love him with all your heart. And live for the Lord. Be an ambassador of Christ. There's so much negativity in the world. There's so much hatred in the world. There's so much violence in the world. So-called uh, black-on-black crimes. So much just crimes in general. Crimes in general. Hating. Viciousness. But the most heinous crime is crime against the innocent and crime against the believers in Christ. God bless you all.